Now, kids, this is going to be complicated, so listen carefully. The earth is spinning, but it is slowing down. So that means that it used to be going faster. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Four, five, six, seven, nine. Okay, good. Well, if the earth is only 6,000 years old, this is not a problem. I mean, it was going a little faster. Adam wouldn't notice. He didn't have a watch anyway, as far as we know. But uh, some of these guys would like me to believe the earth is billions of years old. Man, if you go back billions of years, you're going to have a problem. The earth would be spinning pretty quick. Get up, go to bed, get up, go to bed, get up, go to bed. You'd never get nothing done. Centrifugal force would have been enormous. Man, the winds would have been 5,000 miles an hour from the Coriolis effect. And you want me to believe the dinosaurs lived millions of years ago? I know what happened to them. They got blown off. No, they did not live no millions of years ago. Uh, the Sahara Desert has what's called a prevailing wind pattern. The wind almost always blows the same way. This creates a serious problem. The hot air comes off the desert, kills the trees next door, and that area becomes desert. The process is called desertification. You can read about it in an earth science book. Sahara Desert has been studied very carefully. They did a long study on this and said, you know what, folks, the Sahara Desert is probably about 4,000 years old. That's when it started growing. Egypt used to be fertile land all over the place. Okay, well then, I have a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why don't we have a bigger desert someplace? Why would the biggest desert on the planet be less than 4,000 years old? Well, <clears throat> I have a theory about that. Now, here's my theory. I believe about 6,000 years ago, God created everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. Now, it's pretty hard to have a desert under a flood. You got to admit, that would be tough, okay? So the desert couldn't start growing until the flood water went down. So I predict, based on the Bible, the biggest desert in the world will be less than 4,400 years old. <laughs> it is. Wow. Maybe the Bible's right. You know, when they drill into the ground, sometimes they hit oil. The oil's under incredible pressure in some places, up to 20,000 pounds per square inch. It'll come squirting up out of the ground, like a big zit. 20,000 PSI. Well, the guys who study the rocks on top of the oil say, you know, it just can't handle that pressure for more than about 10,000 years. I know the weight of rock supplies pressure, but the, the pressure in the well is greater than the weight of overburden. They say it should have cracked the rock and leaked off in, in less than 10,000 years. Okay, well then I, now I've got two questions. Where did the oil come from? And why is it still under pressure? Hmm. Well, most scientists agree that oil comes from organisms that are squished. They're changed by heat and pressure into oil. They learned in 1971 how to make oil in 20 minutes in the laboratory. In Australia, they've got a treatment plant that takes sewage sludge and turns it into oil in 30 minutes. There's a factory in Turkey that just opened up, a factory in Texas that makes turkey guts and takes pressurizes them and heats them and turns them into oil. They said in the article, well, we duplicated what Mother Nature does, but what Mother Nature took millions of years to do, we do in about 30 minutes. Sinclair has the dinosaur as their logo. They say dinosaurs turned to oil. Yes, boys and girls, they mellowed for 80 million years. I don't think so. I have a theory about the oil. Now, here's my theory, okay? I believe about 6,000 years ago, God created everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood, okay? In that flood, lots of critters and people drowned. They got buried by the gravel and the rocks and the mud and the sand, and it got pretty heavy after a while, and it squished them <laughs> into oil. So the oil is down there today from the people and animals that drowned in that flood, which means if you stop and think about that, you drove over here tonight. <clears throat> on some of your ancestors. Well, Noah's uncles anyway. Next time you're at the gas station, pumping him in there, you can say, bye, Grandpa. You should have listened to Noah. <laughs> he told you it's going to rain. <clears throat> I was preaching in Denver one time, and some guys came and they said, Hoven, we know you teach the earth is only 6,000 years old. Uh, we'd like to prove to you you're wrong. Would you come with us, please? I said, sure. They took me to this big freezer in Denver, outside of Denver in Lakewood, it's the National Ice Core Laboratory. 36 below zero in there. 
They put this big suit on me, big hat, big gloves, big boots. I was freezing in five seconds when I walked in there. I got Florida blood, you know, it's real thin. They said, Hovind, we go to Greenland and we drill holes through the ice. You know, government job. And we take this big pipe, we drill it down in, and we bring this ice core out of the middle of the pipe, and we save it in this big freezer here in Lakewood, Colorado. We have ten ice cores stored in this freezer. They said they, should, they took me over and showed me one of the ice cores. They said, you see these rings on here? It looks like tree rings, dark light, dark light. I said, oh, yeah, it's real clear. They said, well, what happens in the summer, the snow melts a little bit, and then it refreezes and makes clear ice. It shows up dark on the picture. In the winter, the snow just packs. It doesn't get a chance to melt. And so it shows up as a white layer. So these layers represent summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. They said, now the deepest hole we've ever drilled is 10,000 feet deep. And we counted these ice rings, and there were 135,000 of them. And now you're going around telling everybody the earth is 6,000 years old. We can prove it's at least 135,000. I said, fellas, aren't you assuming those are annual rings? See, they didn't know about the lost squadron, apparently. But in World War II, some airplanes ran out of gas and landed in Greenland. Has anybody ever heard of the lost squadron? Okay, it's been on TV a bunch of times. Well, the airplanes got left there, 1942. They went on and fought the war. Everybody forgot about them until a rich millionaire from Kentucky got a brilliant idea. Go find those airplanes and bring them home. He went there looking for the airplanes. They had to use ground-penetrating radar to penetrate the ice, and they located the planes. They melted a hole to get down to a P-38. It was 263 feet below the surface. They melted this hole down to get to the plane, took the plane apart, and brought the pieces back up through the hole and put it back together in Middleboro, Kentucky, not too far from here. How far is Middleboro from Knoxville? About two hours, maybe? Okay. The planes, that's where its home base is, Middleboro. Well, the planes were in the ice for 48 years. They were 263 feet down. That's uh, five and a half feet a year. Now, the deepest hole they've ever drilled is 10,000 feet. You divide that by five and a half, you get 1,800 years. I know deeper layers get squished, called glacial fern. So really, 4,000 years is plenty of time to put all the ice at the North and South Pole. So why isn't there more ice at the North and South Pole? Mm hmm. I visited the museum and saw the guy who dug out the airplane. His name is Bob Carden. I said, Bob, <clears throat> when you went down to get to that airplane, did you melt through, did you go through ice rings? He said, oh, yeah, many hundreds of them. I said, now, wait a minute. How can there be hundreds of ice rings in 48 years? Shouldn't there be somewhere around 48? He said, who told you those are annual layers? He said, that doesn't represent summer, winter, summer, winter. It represents warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. You can get five of those in one week in Knoxville, can't you? Yeah. But here's a guy still calling them annual layers. Now, either he's ignorant or he's lying. I hope he's just ignorant because ignorance can be fixed. You see, stupid is forever, but ignorance can be fixed. That's the difference, by the way. Uh, a guy that works with the Eskimo said, Brother Hovind, I got uh, 15 layers of snow on my car in eight hours. Not 15 inches, 15 distinct layers of snow. Hmm. You kids are going to be taught that each of the layers of the earth is a different age. They've got Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, Archaeozoic. Did you know the whole geologic column is baloney? It doesn't exist. We covered that on video four. All over the world, petrified trees are found standing up Connecting these rock layers. Petrified tree connecting a bunch of layers can't be millions of years difference in the, air, in the age of those layers. One in Cookville, Tennessee, not far from here. The bottom is coalified, the center is petrified, the top is coalified again. Runs through two coal seams. Cover more on that on video six about coal formation. Mount St. Helens blew trees into Spirit Lake. They're going to petrify very quickly, standing up. That's the way they sank to the bottom. They got waterlogged. Wood petrifies quickly. Here's petrified firewood. Here's a petrified fish giving birth. It does not take millions of years to give birth. Petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's legs still in it. The article's on the table down here called The Limestone Cowboy. The Mississippi River is depositing sediments at the rate of 80,000 tons every hour. 
80,000 tons of mud comes down and dumps off around New Orleans, and that delta is growing larger and larger. They studied the delta pretty carefully and say it probably took about 30,000 years to put all that mud out there in the delta. Okay, well then, I have a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why isn't the whole Gulf of Mexico full of mud by now? They'll say, Hovind, it's 30,000 years. That proves the Bible's wrong. The Bible says 6,000. I know, but see, I've got a theory about that. Here's my theory. I believe 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. As the flood water was...